Our Father, we thank you for this workers' retreat. We praise you for what you have taught us. We thank you for the areas you have touched in our lives and in our services. We're asking that this morning, as we bring everything to a conclusion, the light of the word will search the secrets of our hearts. Amen. You'll draw us closer to yourself. Amen. You'll give us listening ears to hear, Amen. obedient hearts to obey. Amen. That we may eat the good of the land. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come to the close of the workers' retreat, I will bring this message from the Word of God. We're appealing to everyone to listen attentively, wait patiently, and understand that every part of the Word of God is very important, and your time in any case belongs to the Lord. So there is nothing to hurry about. We came so that we'll receive at His hand, and all He has, we ought to receive. In Daniel chapter 5, we find this word that the Spirit of God has preserved in the Word of God, and yet the interpretation or translation is given to us. In Daniel chapter 5, verse 27, take care, thou art weighed. In the balances are not found wanting. The man that first saw this written on the wall did not know even the pronunciation, the meaning, or the significance. But it struck terror into his heart. We're told his knees smote together. The surrounding was confused. There was commotion on the outside, confusion on the inside, until an individual came, the queen, that came to explain that there is an interpreter in the kingdom that will tell the king, the emperor, this one in authority, that God has seen fit to send the message. And Daniel came before Belshazzar. At this time, you know Belshazzar had been king, and he made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. He was a king in the empire. He was busy in the building of an empire and he was a lord and a law to himself. He was under nobody's control. He was absolute authority, absolute sovereign on the throne. God was not on his heart. The word of God was not on his mind. The ideas of the subjects did not matter to him. And the presence or presentation of Daniel was not significant to him. What he liked, he did. What he hated, he rejected. He went by the dictates of his own heart. And he went by the leadings or tendencies or desires of his own mind. The lusts of the flesh he did and performed or acted freely. Nobody asked him, what doest thou? Nobody counseled him, why don't you do it this way? In fact, nobody controlled him. He had an empire to himself. You say, what does that tell about me? As a house fellowship leader, you can make it an empire to yourself not under anybody's control. 
an area leader you will not recognize, a coordinator you will not accept, and a zonal leader you will not appreciate. A state representative is of no significance to you. You say you have the spirit of God. For you, rule or regulation is not important. For you, coordination of the work is not essential. For you, being uniform with the other believers is not important to you. You have an empire. You have decided to rule, and ruling you are ruling. And you do whatever you want in this your small empire. Nobody calls you to question. But one day, there is a voice that, that is coming above. Take care. You are weighed in the balances. You are found wanting in humility. Because we studied on Wednesday night, humility in authority. And Jesus is going to weigh us one by one as house leaders. He's going to weigh us as area leaders, zonal leaders, coordinators, as pastors, as ministers in the village ministry, village church, in the village fellowship, as a woman taking care of the pregnant women in the ministry, is going to ask you, under whose control have you operated? Have you just been a lord on the people and a lord to yourself? You had an empire and everybody knew that you had the stage. You ruled, you dominated. Was humility foreign to your heart, foreign to your life? Were you humble? Were you as chief among the people, leader among the people? Are you, did you come down before them? Did you wash their feet? Were you humble? And except you be converted and become as one of these little children, Jesus told the great exalted apostles sitting on the thrones of great position, ecclesiastically, he said, except you come down, apostles, except you lower yourself, except you become changed in the heart, changed in language, changed in your disposition, changed and transformed, in your attitude to life and to the work and to the service, except to be converted and become as little children, you will not even enter the kingdom of God. Take ill, thou art wage. Your humility will be weighed. Anna said by him, actions are weighed. Jesus said, I am he that has eyes as a flame of fire. And the apostles said to him, it has been given to judge the people. Because all the prophets from Samuel uh, said this, that he has been given to us and as, a, as a prophet. He that will not listen to him shall be cut off among the people. And God has set apart a day by which all your actions, all your activities will be judged by him. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And it's going to weigh you in the balances. Do you have the mind of Christ? Are you humble? Are you lowly? Are you meek? Are you gentle? Are you as a lamb among the fold or as a wolf in the fold? Are you as a lamb or as a roaring lion? Does your voice say so that you are a lamb? Does your disposition, your uh, comportment in the household of faith, does it show you have humility in authority, or do you have an empire of your own? As a village pastor, you hold that fellowship, the money you use and spend the way you like, because you report to no one. You're under nobody's control. You just tell the report you like to tell. After all, the state representative doesn't know what is going on. In fact, maybe he never comes to my location. Maybe he will never come. And maybe I can do what I like. Yes, you can do what you like for some time. But on the last day, there will be a word. Take care. Thou art weighed in the balances. You are found wanting. But you see, it's not, not only going to weigh or it's not only going to examine and search the lives of the house fellowship leaders, the area leaders, the coordinators, the zonal leaders, and the village pastors, can I say. If God is no respecter of persons, 
is going to weigh all the actions of the state representatives and the national overseers of the work. You can do what you like for a brief moment. But on the last day, he'll tell you, thou art weighed in God's balances and art found wanting. Well, as for me, I thank God. I just praise the Lord because I am humble. It's going to weigh you on the first commandment. Who is your God? How do you respect that God? Honor that God. Worship that God. Obey that God. And it's going to weigh you on taking the name of the Lord in vain. Thou art weighed in the balances of the commandments of God. What's the name of Jesus to you? A riddle? A joke? What's the name of Jesus to you? You curse with it. You joke with it. You tell lies with it. You say everything and uh, all the lies and all the exaggerations and end it up with in Jesus' name. You just reveal the pride of your heart and then cover it with, for the sake of Jesus, he'll wait, he'll wait, he'll wait. And it's going to weigh you on the second commandment if you are making images. Making anything in the form of an image to worship. He'll weigh your actions. He'll know whether you have any other God that you bow down to. You make your confessions to the priest that the priest will forgive you your sins. And you place the priest down to be God on your behalf. And he's going to ask you how you spend the Lord's day. Whether the Lord's day is for pictures, for picnic, for pleasure. Or whether you honored the Lord's day. You accepted the Lord's day as a day to be exalted above the other days. A day to be reverenced. A day whereby you rest and you worship the Lord. Your actions, your worship will be weighed in the balances. If you are found wanting on the last day, well, judgment will just fall. How about your parents? Do you honor your parents? In particular now, do you honor your parents in the Lord? Your actions will be weighed. Do you have any father in the Lord, any mother in the Lord? Do you recognize that you are not, you know, the all in all, that you have somebody to seek counseling from? Do you realize that you have somebody that should lead you and guide you and control you? Your actions will be weighed. Your responses will be weighed. In the balances, you might be found wanting. My brother, my sister, do you have anything that leans toward stealing? You peek. Your fingers are sticky. If it touches Naira, that Naira will never come out. Your fingers are bent. You clutch at Naira, at money, or whatever currency it is you are using in your country. If it belongs to anybody, you just claim it, you say, by faith, by covetousness. You possess what belongs to other people. Your possessive attitude to steal will be weighed in the balances. Do you commit adultery? Your actions will be weighed. Take care. Thou art weighed in the balances on adultery. Are you found wanting? Do you lust after men as a woman? Do you have evil concupiscence, inordinate affection within you? Do you daydream? Choose this one to marry by sight. Drop that one next the following week, choose another one. Drop that the following month, choose another one. Drop that the following week, choose another one. Drop that the following year, drop that and choose another one. That's lost. Your actions will be weighed. Your thoughts will be weighed. Your imaginations will be weighed. Your dreaming will be weighed. They dreaming, they'll all be weighed. In the secret... 
What's your relationship with women? Do you keep the word of God that says to them of old, Thou shalt not commit adultery, but in your village fellowship, township fellowship? Have you made a woman so-called sister or just a lady to be pregnant and now you have covered it up because you've gone to commit abortion? You see, my leader doesn't know it. You know it. Heaven knows it. You are weighed in the balances. You are the shepherd that took one of the sheep and slaughtered for your lust, for your flesh. And you have taken the sisters, you have taken the women in the fellowship to satisfy the desires of your flesh. You think it's covered, it will be revealed on the housetops. Because on the last day, all the nations will be gathered together and we will all appear before the judgment seat, before the white judgment throne. And if your name is not in the book of life, but you have a name that liveth, but you are dead, you said you are rich, but you are wretched. You said you can see, but you are blind. You said you, are, you have things, but you are naked. It will be revealed, and we will all know on that day, when all nations are gathered together before him, we will know that you are blind and naked and wretched, that you are poor, that you have nothing, that in fact your name is not in the book of life. You will be weighed and found wanting. You know, these people who are always saying, my sister, my sister. You see, they come from maybe the same stage, from the Yoruba land. But they happen to find themselves in River State or Cross River State. And because the people there don't understand their language, because they, they speak the same Yoruba language, they are not related in any way. And they just say, you know, that's my sister, that's my sister. And they are far away, they are not related. And this is a brother, the other one is a sister. And because you know we don't understand the language they speak in that stage, they live together, they commit sin together. And you say, now I about it, this person is living with you. Ah, it's my sister. It's my sister. No be so. Uh-huh, yes, we're sisters together, brother and sister together. And that woman is, you know, just getting pregnant and aborted. Getting pregnant and aborted. Getting pregnant and aborted. And his Bible study leader. And she is in the choir. Your actions will be weighed and you'll be found wanting. You see, these women who say they make restitution, they leave their, you know, they leave the man. They've been living with. They've been second wife, third wife, fourth wife. Now they say they make restitution. But you understand they've been living with a man for ten years in that wrong marriage. And they have come out. And they're living alone. When they lock their doors, they don't know what is taking place inside. And you see, these so-called brothers, who never visit men like themselves, and they visit these women, women leading with iniquity, having eyes full of adultery, and in the secrets of their chamber, they do things you cannot be relating in the public. It may not start with the outright, outward act of adultery, but it starts with questionable discussion. Feel the conversation and feel the relationship and feel the secrets being lodged in the hands or in the minds of one another. Your actions will be weighed. You'll be weighed and found wanting. And you say you've made restitution. And yet you're feeling lonely because you were with a man before. And every time you feel lonely like that, you just, you know how to, you know, cry and weep and entice that other man. Maybe even a state representative with your tears. And uh, you know the state representative has said we must care, we must feed, we must watch over people, we must take care of people, we must sympathize with people, and you hold that in your hand. And then you lead this man, a man of God before you met him, after you met him a man of the flesh. A powerful, mighty Sam Samson, before you met him, but after you captured him, he became just a powerless man. The heir of power has gone. 
and the air of uh, supplication and prayer has been shown away, taken away, and he becomes an ordinary man. You'll be weighed and found wanting upon your head, upon your heart, upon your whole house, upon your life is written, take it, thou art weighed and found wanting. You know, sometimes you are even living together with um, your real sister. You are a man, but you have your sister of your own father, but maybe not of the same mother. But this sister of yours is already 23 years of age, 25 years of age, fully developed as a woman. But you sleep in the same room. You stay in the same place. And at night, you watch her. You see a nakedness, and something begins to turn on your heart. Whether you do the real thing or not, the fact is you are weighed and found wanting. Because if you look on a woman to lust after her in your heart, you have committed adultery in your heart. Not all who say, Lord, Lord, are Christians. Not all who are here, I'm sorry, are in the book of life. Because you can hear all these messages on humility, and you'll never be humble. Almost humble, yet proud. Almost persuaded to leave all my pride. Almost persuaded to rise up from my throne of authority and come down. But you never do it. Almost will not avail. Almost is to remain in your dirty, defiled position. Almost humble, yet proud. Almost saved, but lost. And you see, your actions will be weighed. You can come to us and tell us you found the will of God in marriage. But you see, the Bible says, thou shalt not commit adultery. And you'll be meeting together. You've been talking together. You have even had intimate sexual relationship together. And then you come to the state leader. You come to the coordinator, you come to whoever you want to come, and you say, well, I'm feeling led to so and so. Have you ever told the person, never in my life, I know the teaching, you are a liar, you are a liar. And then we call the sister, and the sister would have said, if you tell them that we talk together, if you tell them that they did, we did anything together and they disciplined me, I will backslide totally and go to hell. Are you not in hell already? Who worries about you going to hell? And so we ask the, uh, this woman, and because she doesn't wear jewelry, because she's wearing this dummy dress, because she's wearing some foolish, uh, silly scarf upon her head, a sinner, a prostitute, a Jezebel, we ask her, sister, and because we call you sister, you are happy? You know, that's not registered in heaven. Or the register and the account is in heaven. We here just have this, uh, you know, rolling eyeball. We don't see well. Our eyes are dim by age, by ignorance. Because of the human infirmity and frailty, our eyes are dim. We don't see as a prophet. We don't see as a seer. So we can call anybody sister who doesn't have jewelry on. And so we ask, now, is it true that uh, uh, you are feeling led to this? Bro oh, no, we have not even talked together before. I just see him in the fellowship. Is that so? You mean you've never talked or married together? Ah, brother, you know me. How can I discuss something like that and not talk to you? Never. I'm a saintly child of God, sanctified, sanctimonious, separated, saved. I'm already in heaven. Well, this brother is coming to talk to you and he says, well, he's feeling led to you. Ah, I'm not ready for marriage yet. I want to evangelize. They're already committing sin together. I want to work for the Lord. You are weighed and found wanting. You are just a silly liar, a foolish person, a sinner that doesn't know how to run away from the judgment of God, living in sin, dwelling in sin, deceiving everybody you are a child of God, committing fornication and adultery, and be becoming pregnant and aborting. And you are deceiving everybody. Oh, no, no, no. What's marriage? No, brother, don't talk about that. Talk about evangelism. Liar. And then eventually the brother will plead. Why not pray about it, sister? Okay, brother, because you are my leader. 
in this same Nigeria who will see it, who will know it. It's a matter of time. When you get in his house and he begins to kick you, he'll kick you if you have been committing adultery together, he's not saved, he's not a child of God. He will kick you, he will spat his will, he will, you know, slap you, he will do anything. Then you run to the state representative and he will pray, he will fast, God will never answer. It is not that the prayer of the state representative cannot be answered, you have skeleton in your cupboard. You are hiding something. And everybody will pray. And the whole fellowship will pray. And we will give time to pray and to fast for this precious sister who is a child of God. A child of hell. And God will not answer. And God will not answer. God has weighed you and found you wanting. And you see there are people who are messing up. Spoiling their lives. They don't know the meaning of Christianity. They don't know Christ. They don't know God. They don't know the word of God. They just think that this is religious society. They think we have come together to just have a program and to play. I'm not here for play. If you are here for play, good luck to you. I'm here for serious business. You think I'll leave my job. Why I was getting two, three naira. And then come and do hide and seek. God forbid. You will leave your job in the secretariat, leave your job in the factory, leave your schooling. Many of us, if were it not for, you know, working for the Lord, working with the Lord, you'll be graduate today, you left everything, and you are here after sacrificing. You are here after leaving the conveniences of your family, and you are doing child's play, touching her uh, sisters. Say, hey, sister, when do you have your monthly period? Dirty backslider, dirty backslider. Your actions are weighed and found wanting. And you know there are people that have, you know, this immoral thing in their look, in their attitude. Even when they say they are counseling, you know, they like to counsel these sisters and ask them on unnecessary questions. Get into unnecessary conversation. And these foolish ladies, they don't know how to be sensible. In conversation, they will answer all the questions, both the ones that are necessary and unnecessary. The ones that are dirty, unclean, defiling, that will bring immoral, evil suggestions to the heart. The word of God still says, thou shalt not commit adultery. But you see, many of these people just yield into these things. They fall prey into the hands of the devil. And we're conducting many marriages. God knows who is sincere. God knows who is sincere. If you've been pregnant before the wedding, I will conduct it for you. God knows we can't see. He knows the type of eyes we have. The judgment is on you. You are the one that came and said, Thus says the Lord, I wasn't there. You are the one that said, Thus says the Lord. And you can even swear on it. It's your problem. It's your problem. We'll join you together. We'll join you together. If we join you together and you lose your peace, you are together. You have no life of Christ, you are together. And in the home, it's fire and hell, you are together. That's you look out, we'll join you together. That's the simple. It won't take two hours. We know what to sing. We call in the choir. We read the Bible. We tell the people, these people have said that they prayed. It's what you say. They have said they know the will of God is what you say. They have said their parents have agreed is what you say. According to their confession, we join them together. I won't live in that house with you. Hey, if I don't marry, I will backslide. Have you not backslidden already? If I don't do it this week, I will leave the fold. Are you, are you in the fold? Thou art weighed, found wanting. I have a covetousness. Weighed in the balances of the commandments of God and found wanting. I about covetousness, running after so and so has got a car, I must get one. That's your faith. That's your Christianity. That's your profession. That's your understanding of the life of Christ. No more self denial. No more qualities or qualifications of a disciple. No more cross-bearing. Thou art weighed. 
found wanting. And do you bear false witness? You know, come to report other people to the state representative just to get their position. You'll get position, you'll lose heaven. Thou art weighed and found wanting. Now we've seen the message on the evangelist's life and ministry. Have you a calling? Have you a gift? Are you doing the work? How about your messages? Is it all hell, no love? All sin, no savior? Your messages too will be weighed. If they are found wanting, you'll be beaten with many stripes. Watch it, those days will be over there together. We'll see it. It will be weighed right when all the other people were there. Um, Belshazzar was weighed when all the lots were there. You'll be weighed, you'll be weighed. And for those who can smile on that day, wonderful. As we go in one by one, with no big, big Bible to carry, with, with no big chain reference Bible to carry, with no big title as state representative, and we march one by one, and we step into the balances, and all the others are watching. If you make it, there'll be joy. There'll be smiling. If you don't make it, we will all see it. I'll be there. We'll be there. And we would know, because we'll know all things as we are known now. We will know what made you to fail is adultery. It's fornication. It's immoral relationship with other people's wives in the ministry. Immoral relationship with ladies or women in the ministry. And you women who are under bondage to immorality and lust will see you that day. You see, all these were not wearing jewelry. That day, you'll be exposed. Your heart, how dirty, how defiled. It will come out, and we will see not your head, not the scarf, not the dressing, but the very heart. And we will say, hey, our worker. So this is where we end it. When everything crumbles, when the fire tests everything and there is nothing left, when the only thing we hear is wailing, gnashing of teeth and cries, you will be weighed and found wanting. If there is sin in your life, any form of sin, in any shape, in any way, we cannot hide it. Dark is a stain that we cannot hide. How can you hide it? If you go to the bottom of the sea, he sees you. If you hide in darkness, he sees you. Anywhere you go, whatever you do, your language, even the very thoughts of your heart, he sees you. If you don't check it up today, it will be too late. Take care, take care. Thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. How about your message as an evangelist? Do you call the people to conversion? And I've told you in this retreat, the need for them to get into contrition, conviction, to confess their sins, and also to be converted. You can go back and do what you like. You can go back and do as you please in your empire, if you have an empire. You can go back and just hold on to the people. We say, well, we want to have the, a retreat in the state. And you may say, in your own locality, in your own village, my, my village church, you are mine. They are yours. Who fights with you on them? We're not going to the state capital. That's your problem. We're going to have our own Easter um, get-together here. Because, you see, the uh, state capital doesn't understand the need of this village. That's your, that's your problem. That's your empire. Do as you like. And the state representative calls for a worker's retreat. For you to come and prepare the retreat program. You don't come. That's your problem. You say, well, if they are fed up with me, they will kick me out. Nobody will kick you out in this ministry. This is for everybody. 
You can be here as long as you like. When you are going this morning, if you like to make this place a toilet, do it. We will clean it up. Next time, we will call you again. If you like, when you get to the dining hall, all the places, say, why are they serving with this plate? Fling it away. We'll go and take it. We know who you are. We'll call you again. We'll do our best to be patient. We'll do our best to be prayerful. We'll do our best to be pleading with you. Pleading with you. Pleading with you. Sinner, turn. Oh, wanderer, come. But you see, in your stage, as you just bloody fool the state representative, neglect him. After all, who does he think he is? He doesn't know as much as I know. Good luck to you. Nobody will kill you. I hope the state representative will never get angry and slap you. He will never do it. He'll go on his knees and weep and cry. Oh, Father, have mercy on him. Have mercy on him. And whenever you come, he will embrace you, my brother. I didn't see you last Saturday. I didn't see you the other time. What happened? Leave me alone. I don't like this type of authority. Oh, brother, have I offended you? What's the matter? He will weep. He will cry. He'll be patient. He will go down. He'll wash your feet. You can step upon him. This is your day. Another day is coming. You'll see the handwriting yourself. Take him. Take him. You are wage. And found wanting. But are you waiting for that day? To be weighed on that day. When there is no remedy. When there is nothing you can do anymore. No pleading, no crying, no praying, no grace anymore. The day of grace is past. Harvest is past. Doom has come at last. And all the praying you could ever pray will not solve the problem. And as fellowship leaders and area leaders and zonal leaders, state representatives and teachers or pastors, whatever we are called in the various fellowships, do you have the heart of love? That will be weighed. The pastor's heart, the pastor's love, the pastor's life, the pastor's light. Do you bully on the people? I don't know. I'm not there. But that day will be more than this. All the people in your location, they'll be there. The people here, they'll be there. In fact, all the people in the world, all the people that ever lived, it will be a long day of judgment. It will not be counted with hour, with minutes. It will just go on and on. And you'll step into the balances. You'll be there. You'll be there. My brother, come up here. Come. Stay here. Look at everybody. That's how everyone will be singled out. There will be no hurry. There will be no hurry. As you see him, everybody all over the world, all over the world, they will see. From the time you say you're carrying Bible, from the time you say, well, I'm a child of God, as a picture, you know, coming up. Coming up, coming up. All that adultery, that fornication, that immorality, that authority, that pride, that covetousness, you'll be seen, there'll be no hurry. There'll be no hurry. There's no going anywhere. It's the last day. Let's pray. Will Brother Eshaw from Undo Stage please come to close with prayer? Brother Eshaw from Undo Stage. Our Father, we thank you so much for sending such a message to us. We thank you for the way you have been visiting us. We thank you for the way you have been talking to us since we started this meeting. Our Father, we bless you, we adore thee because it is because of the great love that you have for every one of us that has made you to speak like this to us. Because you don't want us to be missing in thy kingdom. You don't want our work to burn in the fire. And you don't want us to hear your voice at last that depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. That's why you are spoken to us in such a manner. Father, we are asking. As we go back to the field, we are, we are asking the Father that the grace to work for you, 
in such a way whereby we live holy and thereby we walk with you, we work for you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. We are asking that to pour it upon every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. We know Lord Jesus Christ has shed his blood. He has offered himself that we might serve him here on earth and at the same time get to his kingdom. Father, we are asking that none of us will be careless with his or our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we are asking that we will be conscious that as we work for you here, that we will be heavily conscious that all the time our hearts will be towards you. As we are working for you, we first of all consider our lives. That as we know that if we are living right with you, if we are living only a righteous life, we will be able to work for you even more effectively. And at last we will be able to get to your kingdom. Father, we are asking that to help us. And Father, we are asking as we wake up in the morning, as we work for you, either in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening, that your mighty hand will be upon us that we live according to your word. We know if we wake up, as we look at your word, as we pray unto you, as we know that without you we can do nothing, as we depend upon the grace and then the blood that you have shed for us, and as we don't allow selfishness to dwell in us, we know by your grace we'll be able to work for you in holiness and righteousness, and at last get to your kingdom. Father, we are asking, as many of us as have prayed this morning, and as many of us have, as have heard this message, we are asking that this message will not stand against us as a judge in the last days in Jesus' name. Amen. We are asking as we go back, all those things that you have committed into our hands, that the purpose, your mind that you have shared with us, a biggest source to thy kingdom, we are asking that we will not be found wanting in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, help us to be conscious always that we are mere servants, we are just instruments in thy hand, and we are not more than that. Let us be, Father, we are asking that to be conscious always that without you we can do nothing, that we are the only all doing the work, that we are just like a cutlass in the hand of a farmer. Father, as we realize this in our hearts, as we are conscious of this, and as we are living under this consciousness, Father, we are asking that to humble ourselves under your mighty hand in Jesus' name. Amen. And all of us leaders, by your grace, that we have called to wash over the flocks. Father, that art of pastor, that care for the people, that the concern of the people will be our concern that the needs of the people will be our needs. Father, we are asking that wisdom to do it and the compassion to do it and the burden for these people, let it fall upon us abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Lead us as we go. Amen. And by the time we come back again to have such a meeting like this, we will come back with our garment still white Amen. and with testimonies of wonderful work that we have done in the field and be able to thank, thank you and then give testimonies that have gone to the feet, like for the apostles, and even by the hand that will finish the course here, we'll be able to say with, with, with clarity in our eyes, with certainty in our eyes, like for the apostles that have fought the good fight, have finished my course, have kept the faith. And like Prophet Samuel of old, be able to say, whose horse have I taken? Whose ass have I taken? Whom have I defrauded or oppressed? Or from whom have I taken bribe? That will be able to come before you and then declare what we have done for you. Father, we are asking that to help us indeed. Without you, we know we can do nothing. But as we are trusting upon your word, as we are standing upon your word, as we look ourselves as just instruments in, our, in, in your hands, that we are the ones doing the work, we know we will make it. We will achieve the success. But because you are going to help us and you have started doing wonderful things in our lives, we know as we go back, Satan will know that his kingdom has been pulled down. In every village, in every town, in every city, in this wonderful, in this country and all the countries in Africa, and all of us that are represented here, we know you have given us that, that burden and compassion for souls, bringing souls into their kingdom that as we go back to our different locations, 
the zeal of the house that has eaten us up here will be put into action. And those things that you have promised in your world will be manifested in our ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Lead us as we go. Amen. Guide us as we go. Amen. You have promised us that we will serve you in holiness and righteousness before you all the days of our lives. Father, we are asking that this thing will be kept in us and will continue to live according to this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you because you know that our answer. You have given us exceeding abundantly than what you have asked. For we ask in Jesus' name. Taken. And uh, we need to really pray so that the Lord himself will minister to all concerning what we will hear so that we will be watchful In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we are standing before you today, asking Lord that you speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. We are believing Lord that as we listen to this message, whatever things you want us to take notice of in our lives, whatever things you want us to really know so that our work will continue to be acceptable in your sight, we pray that you open our eyes to these things and help us to be doers of your word in Jesus' name. We believe, Lord, that you help us to see ourselves right at the mirror of your world. In such a way, Lord God, that whatever blemishes, Lord, whatever things that are not right, we'll be able to cooperate with you to have them removed in Jesus' name. Minister to us through your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you because once again tonight, you have spoken to our hearts, even with this solemn message. Eternal Father, we have seen ourselves before you. Eternal Lord, we know that Tonight, we have all been weighed before you. And we are grateful because it is not judgment day yet. And so, dear Lord God, whatever is contrary to your will in our lives, eternal Lord God, 
whatever things are there by way of covetousness, by way of pride, by way of a life that doesn't please you, or even in some situation in which our Christ sins are being committed, Lord. We are praying, dear Lord God, that tonight you will cleanse us, you will purge us, even before it is too late in Jesus' name. Eternal Lord God, after doing all we are doing, as workers in the vineyard, as house leaders, area leaders, zona leaders, coordinators, Lord, Father, we don't want to miss your glory. We don't want to miss your kingdom. Father, we, want, we don't want to walk in hypocrisy. Eternal Father, I'm praying, Lord, that anything that is contrary to your will in our lives, Lord, as you have weighed us tonight by your word, we pray, Lord, that you sift us completely and take, all, take away all the shame, so that, Father, we will be the better for it, we will shine forth as gold, even in your kingdom, in Jesus' name. Eternal Lord God, we are praying that you will help us. Any way in which we may have been acting as if we are acting as emperors in the little place we are in, holding on even to the house fellowship or to the area, or to the zone or the district as if it has, it's our kingdom, it's our personal property. Eternal Father, I'm praying that you take away this type of attitude in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord God, to always remember that we are men and women under authority, under authorities of dealers over us, under authorities of the pastor. Eternal Lord, so that everywhere we we'll always realize also that you are always watching us, and that Lord, you want us to do everything according to your will, according to your word, in obedience to your commandment. Father, help us to always live in this consciousness, so that Lord, may fully well that everything we do in the flesh will be judged, because we will all appear at the judgment seat of Christ. We pray, Lord, that when we appear, that it will be with condemnation, but by your grace, that it will be with commendation in Jesus' name. We are asking, dear Lord God, that you will take control of our lives in the area of marriage, in the area of our relationship with the opposite sex, in such a way that, Lord, will be able to deal with everybody in all cleanliness, according to your word, as brothers to sisters, as sisters to brothers, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, even in our look, we pray, Lord, that you reach down into our inner heart, into our inner man, and cleanse and purge us of everything, of every tendency to evil, to immorality, to adultery, to covetousness, to fornication in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us to live a life that is free totally of hypocrisy in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, the apostle was writing, and he was saying, as he is, so are we in this present world. Father, that this will be our testimony at all times in Jesus' name. Amen. Grant, Lord God, that everything we do, both in the church, in the house fellowship, in the district, in the area, in the zone, Father, everywhere, that we'll always realize that we are under your watchful eyes and that we have to give account. Lord, that it will be a grievous account, but account that will be given with joy of your help, of your grace, in enabling us to accomplish much for you. That will be the account we will give by your grace in Jesus' name. Take control of our lives, Lord. And grant, Lord God, that this work we are doing, Lord, that everything will be done meritoriously in Jesus' name. We pray that you help us in the handling of even other people's money. In such a way, Lord, that we won't be sticky fingers, Lord, and that there will not be, not, there will be no theft or covetousness, Lord. So that, Lord, whatever authority we have, Lord, that we will always be, uh, uh, realize, Lord, of the need to be humble, the need to wash the disciples' faith, the brothers' faith, Lord, that that will be our way of life in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, not to behave ourselves as Lord over the uh, heritage of God in Jesus' name, but rather as servants of the people, Lord, serving our lives, appropriating the grace of God to really do service that will be appropriate, that will actually be acceptable in your sight in Jesus' name. Lead us on, Lord, O oh God. Father, at the end of the day, we don't want to miss our reward. 
after having served here, after having come here on Mondays, on Thursdays, on Saturdays like this, on Sundays, Lord. Father, we want to hear your, your well done, Lord God. Father, we don't want to hear your con condemnation. Father, grant that it is well done that we will hear in Jesus' name. That we will face with you, we will face you with yes, but we will face you with joy in Jesus' name. Glorify your name in our lives, Lord. Bless our service, Lord God, and let it continuously be acceptable in your sight. We will worship, we adore you, Lord. Thank you for this message, and we pray that we write it in the table of our heart, Lord, so that we will really live for you as we ought in Jesus' name. So that we will live true to your callings for us in Jesus' name. Give us the heart of shepherds, Lord. Help us in our messages, Lord. As we minister in the house fellowship, anywhere, Lord God, we believe you. That you help us to do everything with real great diligence. And according to the grace you are giving us, a perfecting great grace. So that we will do service that will be acceptable, that will be a blessing indeed in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.